Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode here from Gwiggly, your channel for all things books, beards and beyond. Today, by popular request and thank you to my Instagram followers for suggesting this, we are going to be looking at 10 quotes that you need to know for Macbeth. Now if you haven't already, don't forget to hit that thumbs up and share this with all your classmates and friends and family. Hit that bell icon for more books, beards and beyond. And if you haven't already, why not follow Wiglet across Twitter, Instagram and TikTok for more. So, what we're gonna do with today's video, don't forget, take notes. It's important to take notes as we go with this. I picked hand picked these 10 quotes. Test yourself as well. Make sure that what you're doing here is going back through this, which then lends to my final point. Repeat, repeat, repeat. Quotes are only as good as the amount of time you dedicate towards them. So it's really important to make sure that these 10 that I've selected today are checked on daily, I would suggest, up until the time you're going to be assessed on them. So the rules behind these quotes are the following. Most obvious quotes have been avoided. There is no, this is this dagger I see before me. There is no hubble bubble toil and trouble. Now on top of this, quotes range from beginning to end of the play. The first quote being at the start with the last one being towards the end. There are a mix of characters and themes as well within this, and usually the quotes are six to eight words long. Now don't forget, if you happen to use these quotes in a test conditions or an examination, then these quotes will still be absolutely useful. Don't worry about getting them word for word right. And where I've used acts and scenes, and I've only used them to help you get an understanding of where they are in the play. You wouldn't really in any test conditions need to know those necessarily, so just be wary of that. Our first quote of the day, there to meet with Macbeth, said by the witches in Act 1. To meet with, now notice I put that in red. That's to demonstrate a little keyword or phrase you may wish to pick out. So to meet with Macbeth is really important here. This demonstrates that the witches are there to control and manipulate Macbeth, that he is their puppet on a string. They're the ones controlling him, despite how often he feels he controls and orders them. Really important quote to start with. Second quote. Brave Macbeth, well he deserves that name, as said by the captain in Act 1, Scene 2. Now notice the adjective here, brave. This shows Macbeth's honour and glory. He starts as a hero in the play and we have to remember that. And it's an important quote for you to remember as well. Well he deserves that name demonstrates just how highly Macbeth begins the play and in what high regard he starts. A tragedy, as this full title of the play, The Tragedy of Macbeth, suggests, has to have a downfall. And our tragic figure here in Macbeth very much has that, as seen by the quite glowing words of the captain at the start. Now, moving on to quote three, the instruments of darkness tell us truths. This is said by Banquo in Act 1, Scene 3, and here what Banquo is doing is providing a foil or a counterpoint to Macbeth. Whereas Macbeth is much more optimistic about the witch's prophecies, it's Banquo who instead is actually much more cynical. Banquo is the one wary and cautioning Macbeth, using the metaphor, the instruments of darkness, in reference to the witches themselves. On to quote four now. I fear he, Macbeth, is too full of the milk of human kindness. This is said by Lady Macbeth in her first appearance of Act 1, Scene 5. Notice here the phrase, the milk of human kindness. She's using a metaphor here to demonstrate how Macbeth is almost too weak, or Macbeth is too uh, moral and kind and caring to commit the deeds he needs to do to become the King of Scotland. Now, you'll also notice in here how I've used the closed brackets. You use that when a word is not in a quote, but you need to apply it to a quote. So it's a really important point there to apply it to. So um, here it makes more sense than it would do without the word. Halfway now on to quote five. I had our men stuck in my throat. Now this is said by Macbeth at two scene two, just after he's murdered Duncan. Notice he cannot confirm the Christian blessing of our men. In doing so, he's demonstrating how he feels he's sacrificed his soul or his soul has slipped away in the murder of Duncan. By saying that, it demonstrates to the audience how Macbeth feels he has lost himself spiritually, and that is the cost he's paying for murdering Duncan, that he can't confirm that kind of Christian prayer and blessing. So in doing so, losing his soul in the process. Really sort of subtle quote, but really devastatingly effective one to use right. Quote six now. A little water clears us of this deed. Now this quote is a nice counterpoint to the quote you just read there, and it's said by Lady Macbeth in Act 2, Scene 2. What she's saying here is, by contrast to Macbeth's fears and worries, how a little water, notice I put that in red as a key phrase within the quote, you can dig or explore as the teacher may say, a 
little water, like a tiny blessing makes all the difference, clears us of this deed. She won't call it a murder. She uses euphemistic language, this deed, like it's an act, just a generic uh, task that needs to be completed uh, in doing so. It's a really important quote there to show how at this point in the play, Lady Macbeth is very much not, not too bothered, where in contrast to Macbeth, who very much is. Quote seven, there is none but he, Banquo, whose being I do fear, said by Macbeth at Act 3, Scene 1. Now, at this point in the play, Macbeth is very much worried and afraid of Banquo. You may wonder why. Reason being is Banquo is the only other character who actually meets the witches and knows the witches and the prophecies they set out to him and Macbeth. So by using the word none, it shows how no one has a power and control and hold over Macbeth's emotions and fears in the same way Banquo does at this point who's being I do fear. Notice that as well, the sense that Macbeth is completely afraid of what Banquo could say, what Banquo could do, um, and holds such a controlling power over Macbeth at this point of play, hence why he is murdered at the orders of Macbeth. Now, quote eight goes a little further into the play, and this is one a lot of students forget, but I must also feel it as a man. Said by Macduff in Act 4, Scene 3, Notice here, this quote is really important because in contrast to Macbeth later on when he finds out that Lady Macbeth has died, here he's using a humane, emotional sense to, to demonstrate how love, grief and loss has to be felt. Whereas Macbeth is very dismissive, Macduff is really humanising about this and it shows how ultimately that sense of humanity, as personified in Macduff, wins over where Macbeth ultimately loses. Now onto our last two quotes, and these two kind of go together. They're the last lines of Lady Macbeth and the last lines of Macbeth. So quote nine is, what is done cannot be undone, to bed, to bed, to bed. Said by Lady Macbeth in Act 5, Scene 1. Here we see how Lady Macbeth has completely changed from how she was in Act 2, Scene 2. What's done cannot be undone. This idea that it is demonstrably broken, has demonstrably fallen apart here, as she has. Uh, that these acts of killing and death and murder and regicide can't be changed. And this has a desperate and deep and direct impact on her emotions. Now, To Bed, To Bed, To Bed is a trilogy or a triple. Again, another reference to the Holy Trinity there, an indirect reference, I would suggest, uh, particularly at this point in the play. Now, if there's anything else you'd like me to cover in a play that I haven't, or you've got any questions about Macbeth, don't forget to leave a comment below, and I will reply to every single one of them just pop them in the comments below. Now, last of all, our final quote is the final words from Macbeth. Lay on Macduff and damned be him the first cries hold in the mouth. Was said by Macbeth in Act 5, Scene 8. Now, whereas Lady Macbeth has completely fallen apart, Macbeth goes back to what he knows best. That's fighting, and that's violence, and that's fighting to the bitter end. He realises at this point in the play that the prophecies the witches have told him are completely false. He also realises at this point in the play that he has nothing left but his warrior instincts. So we have this kind of cursed or kind of broken honour, I would suggest, in the character of Macbeth at this point. So when he says lay on, he's still challenging Macduff, knowing he's doomed. Damned be him that first cries hold enough. His final words are words of combat that he is going to go out fighting, despite how doomed he actually is. So thank you as always for tuning in. It's muchly appreciated. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to Wiglet across all our different platforms. Just search Wiglet to find us on TikTok, Instagram and Twitter. And until next time, all the very best. Take care and bye bye.